Hello friends, I'm Rob, this is Digital Waste Draw, and in this video I'm going to be speed painting a white scar. First off, we've got some good news, uh, some more good news, and then some bad news. Uh, good news number one is no airbrushes. Uh, I don't own an airbrush, so there you go. Uh, good news number two is we're not going to need to use hundreds of layers to build up the white. It's a very simple and very straightforward technique. But the bad news is that the main, uh, the main technique involves some very specific paint, and I'm not 100% sure how easy that is to get outside of Japan, um, where I live. So the easy part to start with is um, yeah, this, which is Vallejo um, Sky Grey, which is fantastic. And the other part, secret part of this is um, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Finisher Surfacer, uh, 1,500 grey, 1,500 grey, who knows how that's pronounced. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is a primer, and the important part about these two is that they go on and they're the same colour. Uh, if you can't find this stuff, I think probably the Games Workshop uh, Gracia spray and uh, the Gracia pot paint would probably do the same job. Uh, the basic idea is that you want the spray paint and the pot paint to be the same. Um, I haven't tried the Gracia paint, so I'm not sure how good the coverage is, but you should be all right to use that. So don't worry if you can't find this, you can still follow along. Let's paint some white scars. Clean and prep your model as you usually would. Uh, hunt down and destroy all mold lines for the Great Khan. Drill your barrels for the Emperor, etc. For basing, I recommend Vallejo Coarse Pumice. Slap it on the base and it will dry much stronger and tougher than a traditional sand plus PVA glue method. I've been using it for years and there's no peeling, flaking or anything like that over time. It's also sticky enough to hold small pieces of cork or any extra bits that you would like to add to the base. Prime black first and make sure you fully cover the miniature. Once dry, hit it with a white spray. Get it at a roughly 45 degree angle from the top, which is also called zenithal priming. Uh, this will give you some shadows and a bit of pre-shading. If you're not sure about this step, you can always check with your local hobby helper. For extra satisfaction points, make sure you prime the miniature white by placing it in exactly the same spot that you previously primed it black. Once primed, use lead belcher to paint the gun bits and all the armour joints. I used Vallejo Panzer Grey for the weapon casing, but any dark grey or just black will be fine. Get your null oil out and cover the metal and grey parts fully. Then carefully paint it onto all the lines and details of the armour. If you mess up here, you can quickly wipe it away with a clean brush, a cotton bud, or just use your finger like I did here. Next up, use Mephiston Red for the red parts. Officially, white scars should be mostly white, uh, but I decided to have the shoulder rims and the faceplate red uh, because I like the way it looks. Once the red is done, I shaded it a little with some Agrax Earthshade. There's no special trick to freehanding the leg stripe. I just uh, drew some straight lines and then coloured them in. Leave them off or paint the entire lower leg red if you think it's easier. You can do a bit of highlighting with Evil Sun Scarlet if you want to be fancy, but there's so little red on this mini that you can probably skip this step if you're batch painting a whole army. At this point, you can tidy up any white bits by using your Vallejo Sky Grey. In this video, I'm showing uh, Sky Grey on the Marine's ass, so you can see that it's basically the same shade as the Rattle Can. Finally, I used contrast paints uh, wildwood for the pouches and ethermatic blue for the plasma coils and the eyes. At this stage, you will have something looking a bit like this, and you can slap some colours on the base and call it a day if you want to keep it simple. Much like my Iron Hands 
painting black tutorial, uh, link in the description below, we are going to avoid all the hassle of highlighting and instead use weathering to give the miniature some more visual interest. The base was painted Rhinox Hide and so I used the same colour for the weathering. You can use a sponge for this, either an artist sponge or use a small piece of a foundation makeup sponge, uh, both work great. However, as you can see, I'm using a very, very old and very cruddy frayed brush. Um, wipe most of the paint off it, same technique as if you were dry brushing, and then very carefully stipple the paint around the edges, going heavier on areas that will get the most wear, such as feet and outer facing edges. Finally, once again, you can tidy up any over weathered areas or any mistakes using the sky grey. Follow all these steps and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've painted a white scar and I just intended to do one uh, just for this video, but I quite like the way they look, so I might do a kill team or like a 500 point army or something like that, um, because I've already got an Iron Hands army, but the true mark of being an adult is just accepting that your life is going to involve multiple Space Marine armies. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and uh, leave me a comment. Comments and good numbers on the video really help my motivation. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.